Memory studies is an interdisciplinary field that draws on various intellectual strands including anthropology, education, literature, history, philosophy, psychology and sociology. Scholars in this field, particularly historians studying collective memory, often reference the work of French sociologist Maurice Helbox whose landmark work Social Frameworks of Memory was published in 1925. Other influential works in memory study include Eric Hobsbawm and Terence Ranger's The Invention of Tradition, Bergson's Matter and Memory, Paul Ricoeur's Memory, History and Forgetting, Piera Nora's Realms of Memory and Jacques Le Goff's History and Memory. These these scholars contend that the concept of memory challenges overarching narratives of history and power. Memory, they argue, plays a crucial role in shaping existence, becoming and belonging. Helbox proposed that memory is not solely an imminent, but is also relational, encompassing family, friends and broader societal and collective frameworks. Studies on mediated memory often concentrate on elite news media coverage of significant events like wars, political revolutions and assassinations with close ties to Holocaust studies. While there may be no consensus on the definition of collective memory and its ownership, it is generally agreed that such memory is shareable among members of social group or community, whether at the national, institutional, religious or familial level. The preoccupation with memory in social thought dates back to the late 19th and early 20th centuries, gaining prominence with the term collective memory coined by Hoffmansall in 1902. Memory research is closely linked to contemporary political debates especially concerning the political implications of past traumas persisting in the present. Interest in memory studies has surged since the 1980s. While psychist on memory from an individual perspective, sociological theorists emphasized the social and cultural foundations of shared memories. Memory studies evolving from an emphasis on individual memory now extends its purview to broader dimensions of social memory and memory and the politics of public remembering, particularly through communication media. The focus lies in understanding how various forms of remembering function as a collective representation of the past, shaping cultural resources for social and historical identity and influencing specific interpretations of history over others. While the term collective memory was first introduced by Hoffman Stahl in 1902, the French sociologist Helbox is widely regarded as the pioneer of collective memory research. Helbox, Helbox challenged the individual psychological approach to memory, emphasizing that individuals cannot remember outside of their group context. He viewed individual and collective memories as tools for social groups to establish significance in individuals as life. Helbox perceived history as a dead memory, preserving paths with which people no longer have an experiential connection. He argued that this understanding devalues historiography's epistemological claim in favor of the meaningfulness of memory. His included autobiographical memory, historical memory based on records, history as the remembered past, and collective memory as the active past shaping identities. However, critics raised concerns about the concept of collective consciousness being detached from the individual preferring alternative terms. Collective memory is not history. It manifests in the actions and statements of individuals, often privileging contemporary interests. Memories are viewed as cultural negotiations described as fluid and mediated traces of the past. 
The collective memory concept assumes that every social group develops a memory preserving its self-image, shaped by socio-political constructs and negotiations. Remembering is an active reconciliation of past and present, influencing our changing sense of identity. It is a performance through lived context, extending beyond individual psychologists. Sturken introduces the term cultural memory to describe memories shared outside formal historical discourse but enriched with cultural significance. She emphasizes that cultural memory not only involves, involves the production and reproduction of memories through cultural forms, but also underscores the dynamic interplay between personal and cultural memories. Fenris and Wickham use the term social memory, while critics vary of the potential overgeneralization of collective memory, they advocate for specific terms like official memory, vernacular memory, public memory, popular memory, local memory, family memory, historical memory, and cultural memory. Sturken distinguishes between collective and cultural memories. Cultural memory, in her view, highlights the circulation between personal and cultural memories, often shaped by various cultural forms. Collective memories, on the other hand, are frequently characterized as cohort memories where a specific cohort impacted by a significant event influences the writing of its history and shapes collective memories for subsequent generations. Wang notes that collective memory sustains a community's identity and facilitates the continuity of its social life and cultural cohesion. Orlick and Robbins use the term social memory studies as a broad framework for investigating the diverse ways the past influences us, focusing on distinct mnemonic practices in various social contexts rather than treating collective memory as a singular entity. Penn Baker supports this perspective by highlighting that significant historical events create stronger collective memories and current circumstances influence which events are remembered as significant. The distinction between collected memory and collective memory is drawn with the former referring to the aggregated individual memories of a group, research and oral history, and the latter representing the public manifestation as mythology, tradition and heritage. Additional terms such as post-memory, describing inherited memories not yet integrated into one's psyche and prosthetic memory, denoting memories, memories circulating through mass culture, further enrich the vocabulary of memory studies. Holzer and Alderman assert that social groups utilize diverse recollections to shape or dissolve themselves, emphasizing the intersection of these uses with power. They argue that the study of social memory inevitably involves questions of domination and unequal access to a society's political and economic resources. In essence, individuals and groups recall the past not for its own sake, a tool to support different aims and agendas. Wang supports this view, stating that throughout history, collective memory has played a central role in creating community from small units like families to entire nations. The social practices of collective remembering enable community members to preserve their conception of the past. Wang further condensed that collective memory can serve as a therapeutic practice for a community and its members. It involves an active constructive process where community members interpret and process shared past experiences, particularly traumas, into eventual memory representations, often expressed through narratives, dramatizations, art and rituals. Understanding the social, cultural and historical context where remembering takes place is crucial for comprehending the processes, practices and outcomes of collective remembering. In terms of methods in memory studies, attention to methodology has been limited due to a focus on theoretical concerns. 
Kately and Pickering advocate for practical attention to empirically studying memory to foster intellectual cohesion in the field. Memory studies employ diverse methods spanning disciplines, including the study of primary, historical, and archival sources, oral histories, case studies, interviews, and surveys. Rodiger and Wurzk call for systematizing and improving the methodological foundations of the field, suggesting that rigorous qualitative and quantitative approaches are applicable to memory studies. Despite this, there is a noted gap between oral historians and those in memory studies due to a preoccupation with collective trauma, national history and macro-cultural memory over individual and small group micro-processes of remembering. Additional methods in memory studies include discourse analysis, focusing on how people co-construct the past through speech and language, cultural memory scapes and multi-sided research with specific techniques used to elicit memories, such as using photographs as vehicles for the remembering process. These stories go beyond chronological descriptions providing an evaluative and interpretive framework. The cultural memory scape encompasses multi multiple memory sites connected by associational logic, including national, ethnic, religious, and village contexts. Rodiger and Wurz contend that the field of memory studies must develop unique theoretical approaches rather than uncritically adopting terms from, the, terms from the study of individual memory, such as repression or collective amnesia. Memory studies, they argue, is too diverse to have overarching or unifying theories, emphasizing the need for proper methods and theories for the field to achieve coherence. The relationship between media studies is highlighted by Sturken, who emphasizes the centrality of mediation in the conception of memory within visual culture, cultural studies, and media studies. Kitsch delves into the complex relationship between journalism and memory, describing journalism as a, as a primary source of information about the past and a main site for public anticipation of memory, often referred to as the first draft of history. The mass media plays a pivotal role in shaping memory and the politics of remembering is inherently link linked to power dynamics. Gard Hansen refers to media as the first draft of history, capturing events as they unfold, negotiating history and memory. Several media theorists have contributed theoretical explorations of memory directly from the perspective of media studies. These explorations range from cinema's impact on emotional connections to past events to the concept of new memory in the analysis of 24-hour television news. Zelizer challenges the assumption that journalism merely provides a first draft of the past and argues that journalism's treatment of the present often involves a treatment of the past. Despite this, there is no default understanding that includes journalism as a vital agent in memory studies, as popular assumptions often limit it to the temporal constraints of deadlines. Critiques of memory studies highlight a focus on the representation of specific events without sufficient consideration of the distinctive nature of collective memory compared to the individual memory. Collective memory studies or criticized for neglecting the problem of reception, hinder, hindering their ability to illuminate the sociological basis of historical representation.